Good afternoon, everyone. As the title suggests, uh, we'll be talking about isotropy of orbital involutions. But it will be a very basic talk, and uh, I'll talk about algebras with involutions and how algebras with specifically orthogonal involutions can be thought of as an extension of quadratic form theory. For most part of the talk, like I'll be working with uh, fields of characteristic different from two, but at the last, like towards the end, I'll be talking about my work, which is which requires the field to be of characteristic two. Okay, let's start. So first things first, uh, what is a quadratic form? Uh, quadratic form is just uh, not like how uh, a quadratic form is just a homogeneous polynomial of degree two over a field f. That means it has a coefficient in the field f. And then now I can write uh, what does a quadratic form, it, what does it mean for a quadratic form to be isotropic? So let's give you the definition here. Let, just, quadratic form. Then We say Q is isotropic to F if there exists a non trivial vector V such that Q divided upon V is zero. Otherwise, we say it to be. So, uh, going forward, so I'd like to give the first theorem, which is by Springer's. It's a celebrated theorem in the quadratic form theory, which says, write it down. Then again, Q. In a quadratic form. If Q becomes isotropic over an odd degree extension of F, then Q is already isotropic over the base. In other words, you can make it uh, in terms of an isotropic saying that if Q is a, an isotropic over the base field F, then it remains an isotropic over the uh, odd degree expansion. So again, uh, another basic uh, theory of quadratic form is like uh, given a quadratic form, we can always associate a bilinear form to it. Like given Q, we can associate B, a binary form denoted by BQ, which is just can be defined as Q of X plus one. So there is a one to one correspondence between by uh, Q and binding your forms associated to it. So, so, uh, so now the question we can answer now with this, like how are quadratic forms are related to algebras with involutions? So an invol uh, for an algebra A, an involution is nothing but a anti automorphism of order two. And suppose 
we are given uh, again suppose we are given the quadratic for q we have this bilinear form of the q then we can look at this map if you have going from b to b star which is the homomorphism from b which is given by just evaluate the x and y so Then uh, we say that this bilinear form BQ is non singular if and only if this BQ hat is, uh, is an isomorphism. So uh, now uh, we know what BQ hat is. So we can now describe uh, involution on the endomorphism algebra of B over F, like using this BQ hat. So let me just write it down. So for any F belonging to this endomorphism, we have uh, it is given by this. So first things we can notice that uh, this uh, evolution is only uh, uh, can be written down only when uh, BQ hat is uh, an isomorphism because we need the inverse and even if uh, we multiply the bilinear form by a scalar factor it doesn't change because we have both inverse and BQ and its inverse so it will cancel out. So, so the involution is defined only if BQ is non-singular, the bilinear form. Alternatively, we can also define this as This uh, relation BQ of X F of Y can be written as so you see, we have found a way of associating uh, involution on this endomorphic algebra using the bilinear forms BQ. So this gives us a theorem. It says this. Uh, let A be a central simple algebra over F. 
directly denoting as CSA, uh, where F is a splitting pivot. That is, okay. it is just the other module over there. For some, for some vector space, then, then. The involution, then the equivalent, then the equivalence class of metric bilinear form uh, up to a scalar multiplication. Scalar vector in F star are in one to one or in one to one correspond correspond with orthogonal involution on this end of So you see, uh, since we know a symmetric linear form gives us a quadratic form, so we know these quadratic forms are now related to orthogonal involutions on these algebras. So that's why I'm saying that the study of orthogonal involutions on algebras can be thought of as the extension of quadratic form theory. Yes. Can I just be confused? So A is is not a field, right? It's not a field. Yeah, it's a central simple algebra over here. So what is the splitting field of A? So when A becomes like this, when A looks like an endomorphism algebra over here. What do you mean by becomes? Why don't you just write? Let A, B, and F. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, I can. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, yes. Well, but, so there is an assumption on F there? Mm. Yes. No. Uh, no. F. Okay. A is just a way to set your work for F. Oh, okay. <laughs> can I also ask, have you said what an orthogonal evolution is? Maybe it's the word. No, I haven't. I, I will try it down. Ah, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's do the definition of the orthogonal evolution. Let's say the uh, central simple algebra of the map. Then, uh, and sigma, an evolution sigma. Sigma again C to be as of A if uh, the dimension of the symmetric elements with respect to this involution is sorry. Symmetric elements of A and of the N. Now we defined orthogonal, but there were three more things coming up, four more things coming up that we people might not know. Central single algebra, degree, sin, skew. Yeah, I can define this. 
Yeah, we decide just what the central simple alpha is, and the rest maybe can go with words. But, uh, but a central simple algebra is just an algebra whose center is the field base field F, and it's simple. That means it has, doesn't have any non-trivial uh, both sided titles. And the, the symmetric elements of A with respect to stigma can be defined as just it fixes. And the skew symmetry will be just minus of it. Say um, the equivalence class of non similar. Yeah, sorry, yeah. So now we know how to associate an evolution to a quadratic form. So, in fact, I was mentioning this to be a critical because this can be even extended like like uh, a generalized case when the a is non-split where we can look at non-singular hermitian forms which will be in one to one correspond with involutions on the endomorphism uh, algebra maybe i'll write it down so I wrote it down. Right? Uh, uh, that means uh, A will be an endomorphism algebra of vector space over F. That's what it means F to be a splitting field of A. So, whereas, uh, so now, the, as I said, that, so, sorry, I'm, I'm confused. So, we established that in the theorem of one, the condition is that A is just a matrix algebra. Yes. That, right? Is this also a condition of definition, or do you allow general central simple algebra? Here, it's. No, 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 the definition of the top point. You start with that A, B is central simple algebra over F. Yes. For a general central simple algebra. But it has to be matrix algebra over F. No, I think you know, yeah. for the definition of orthogonal, you don't assume A to be split. No, 
No. Okay. But for the, the, and then this thing, this refers to the theorem and not the definition. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This. Uh, yes. Yeah. This is the generation of the theorem. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, so now, now it's now. What's the what's the meaning of the Hermitian form here? Uh, it's not a complex complex number. It's uh, it, uh, Hermitian forms can be defined over any division algebra, like just like mm -hmm. complex numbers. Okay. So with involution. With, with involution. You replace the complex combination by evolution. Okay, uh, so just uh, I mentioned the Springer's theorem, right? So as I said, it can be thought of an extension of the quadratic form theory. So it's so it's natural to ask: Does a similar uh, theorem like Springer's uh, hold in algebras with orthogonal involution? And this gives us this conjecture, which is not still open. Let A be a center simple algebra over F and sigma B an orthogonal involution on A. Then E as then if sigma becomes isotropic over f so over an odd degree extension of f then it is isotropic over the distance. And for what does it mean, a sigma becoming isotropic? It's like uh, uh, we say sigma is isotropic with F if there exists a right idea. Still open, but there is some significant uh, progress towards it, and it was done by Kartenko in the year 2020. And and what you mean by become? So what are you doing to a to sigma? I mean, I okay. Guess I know it, but uh, yeah, I don't think that I would understand that from the formulation. So when I say becomes uh, isotropic over or degree extension of f. We look at the involution, suppose E is the uh, extension, then we look at the uh, algebra A tensor with E, and the involution, uh, when we extend this in, uh, involution to the uh, odd degree extension E, given by sigma times identity over the key. Maybe you should write a right tensor product with the BC, that's this notation. To look at this. So if it has a right angle here, then we will say that it has a becomes isotropic over E. Okay. So this is still open, but there is progress. It is done by Arbeco in the year 
So it says that again A be a central simple algebra over F. F is of characteristic different from two and sigma be a be an orthogonal involution. Then the following argument. Okay. Uh, sigma again becomes isotropic over any splitting field. extension of okay so this is the best results we have towards this conjecture part of the universe so first things i would like to remark is that the first condition is equivalent to saying that sigma becomes isotropic over a generic splitting field uh, this is done because we can work with easily work with uh, generic splitting fields. An example of generic splitting field would be the function field of a Severy Brouwer varieties. Okay, I can define like I, I usually think of this generic splitting field as something which is related to any splitting field by a transcendental extension. So the iso so the isotropic questions are like uh, does isotropic conditions doesn't change so we can work with generic splitting field instead of any every splitting field of A. Should I define? Uh, no, yeah, okay. I can define a, a several brown variety. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think depending on. So I will do that. Like getting two to one is easy, and it will be uh, and it uses all the things we have done till now. And one to two going from one one imply two is difficult, which are not. Easy. So what I want to do is this. Okay. I would like to I have to define a separate property. Right? We are simple, simple, simple. The variety of all like ideas of each of 
to reduce dimension one <coughs> is called period order. And a reduced dimension can be defined as for an ideal i. Sorry, can I the reduced dimension is just the dimension of i over f and that is that. so this will be the variety we will be working with not and the function and its function will so uh, what I wanted to do was two implying one. So because of the properties of this variety, we have this diagram. Let me just first we have the base field F, then we have this odd degree extension over F, and we have this again this function field of several over M, which I did not. Now then we took take the free composite of these two fields, which I will denote by E tilde, and this will be again an odd degree extension of this function field. Okay. So what does two say? Like we have a sigma here over F, which becomes isotropic over E. Right. In fact, we'll go one above and say that we can say that sigma is indeed isotropic over E tilde. So we have by the condition two, we have sigma over E tilde. Is <coughs> but you, but observe that E tilde is again a splitting field because f. Uh, this function field sits inside this e tilde. So, and we said that if f, uh, if, of, uh, if we have a uh, splitting field, then this sigma uh, e tilde will have a quadratic form over e tilde, which which we can work work with work with. So this, so uh, let me just say oops, we have sigma is isotropic, and in fact. The this sigma e tilde will be adjoined to some quadratic form over e tilde for some quadratic form over e tilde, and we know that this. A sigma uh, even is uh, isotropic if it only if the quadratic form is isotropic. So this means this implies the Q. This is said before in the Oh, did I? Oh, okay. I guess I should have said it. When I just, yeah. Yes. So, yeah. If we have a quadratic form and we look at the adjoint involution on the normal algebra, then uh, then the involution will be isotropic over the endomorphism algebra if and only if the quadratic form is isotropic over the vector space. So Q is isotropic over E. So now this is where our Springer's theorem comes into place. Now we know we know this uh, is that is an odd degree extension of this function field. So we know Q is isotropic over E tilde. So it will be isotropic over this function field by Springer's theorem.
and by the similar uh, uh, and, and hence the sigma over this function field will also get sort of sigma over this function field is so so we have shown that if a, if the sigma becomes the evolution becomes isotropic over odd degree extension then it will be uh, isotropic over the generic splitting field and hence it will be isotropic over every splitting field of A. So this is just two implied one. It's easy. It's straightforward. But one implying two is tricky and a little bit complicated because of the fact we use techniques from algebraic geometry. Like we use theory of motifs and child groups and this spin dot operations on child groups. I'm not going to it. I'm just mentioning that we need this the uh, composition uh, the composition uh, theorem of motifs of varieties, uh, which we use to count the degree of a cycle inside of the varieties, and then find the contradiction with it. I'm not going. So this so we so <coughs> theorem says this, and my PhD project is to generalize this theorem of Carpenko to characteristic two fields. So how is it different and what should we need? What do we need to change in the statement to have an analogous result? The first things we need to observe, observe is that Observe in characteristic two fields that there is no one to one correspondence between this bilinear forms and quadratic forms, and hence there is no one to one correspondence between the adjoint involution and the quadratic forms. So what do we need? We need something. We need the involution plus some extra information to make use of the quadratic forms because we know quadratic form theory a lot better than the algebra of the involutions. So that's where the objects called quadratic pairs come into place, which is just it's, it's just a pair, uh, an involution with some extra information. And I'll just write this down. Let now from here it will be characteristic two fields. Okay. And sigma be a game in Involution 
of the first kind. And F is a F linear map from the symmetric elements of A. Satisfying the following relations, conditions. Satisfying the status the word of the first kind, the better you place it by F linear, the people know. Yeah. Which is F linear, right? So dimension of the symmetric elements of A with respect to the sigma should be n plus one by two. And the place of A of two symmetric elements should be zero and this F linear map evaluated on this symmetrized elements is the reduced So this trace is can be thought of like we know we have a sent a as a central simple algebra. If we look at its scalar extension to the algebraic closure, it will be a matrix algebra. So element A can be thought of as a of a thought of as a matrix. And we can look at its characteristic polynomial, and from that we can look at the trace. Yes. And uh, so you see, it's just the involution with some extra involution, extra information, information which is the F. And in fact, just like quadratic forms, uh, just like quadratic forms and involution in characteristic different form two. We have the we have <coughs> the following theorem. Let the be a split center simple algebra over F. Then every quadratic pair quadratic pair on A is the joint to a quadratic form over F up to a scalar. So again, we now have a way of going between this algebras with quadratic pairs and quadratic forms. And in now, here we just have to change the let I just change it here. And the and sigma comma f dear. And this term it out. My PhD thesis is to prove this term. So 
I said that one in line two, we use some varieties which uses uh, this involutions. Now we will construct those varieties using the isotopy of quadratic pairs. And then we look at the modified decomposition of those varieties. At last, we look at the steam knot operations of those varieties, of troubles of those varieties, which were not defined. Uh, but now there is a definition, and I just need to look at the properties of those steam operations. So this is just for split case. Oh, sorry, I was looking. I was just saying that uh, here E has to be split to get a one-to-one -one bijection of quadratic pairs and. I don't think you said what it means to be isotropic for quadratic pairs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. This is the right angle. I uh, right angle. I subset right angle. I subset the involution is uh, topic with the and with the other information that is F. Uh, I intersected with the symmetric elements is zero. So the same. Uh, so I just we just know about the uh, how to relate this quadratic pairs and quadratic forms in the split case. In a non-split case, we have another object called generalized quadratic forms, which are in one-to-one -one correspondence with the quadratic pairs. I will not define the uh, general quadratic forms is. And with those two things, we can tackle this problem in characteristic two. That's it. Thank you.